Talk about getting brought back down to earth. Wow, that was tough. That was tough to watch. All right. So the Detroit Pistons, they lose to the New York Knicks tonight in blowout fashion, 98 to 108. Oh, okay. So my initial thoughts, right? Um, This game was lost in the first quarter. This game was lost in the first quarter. The Pistons got outscored 39 to 13 in the first quarter. And after coming off their first win, I was disappointed because I expected this team to come out with energy. They have not won at home yet, right? Their only win has been on the road. That was the last game against the Sixers. So I expected this team to look to try to build on that, right? Build on that. And unfortunately, they came out the gate sluggish. Um, they never led in it. I don't think they ever led in this game. I think it was a wire to wire win for the Knicks. They got punched in the face tonight, man. They got punched in the face tonight by the Knicks. The Knicks came out ready to go. They came out ready to go. Um, for the first time this season, I heard boos at LCA. Um, the fans were not happy. They were not happy with the effort. They weren't happy with the score, scoreboard. You know, the Knicks didn't make it any better. You know, they were taunting the, taunting the fans a little bit. But, you know, hey, when you up 30 points, you can do that, right? I have to say, though, this is a very good New York Knicks basketball team. Coached by Tom Thibodeau. It's crazy that the Knicks before this game were 29th in the league in defense. That's insane for a Tom Thibodeau team. But tonight, they did not look like a 29th ranked defense in this particular game. They looked like a Tom Thibodeau coach team. It reminded me of the 2014 Bulls, right? That Tom Thibodeau team. They just play very sound defense. They play great offense too, we're gonna get to that. But defensively, they were very impressive, especially for a team that is just coming together. They got a lot of new guys. They just brought in Carl Anthony Towns. They brought in Mikael Bridges. So this team was very impressive for not having have played multiple seasons together. You didn't see any back cuts for layups. The Pistons were moving the ball, but they were just moving it around the perimeter, right? There were no missed assignments for the Knicks. And whenever they did rarely miss an assignment, right? For an easy bucket, you could see the rest of the guys getting on whoever it was that missed, <laughs> that missed their assignment, that blew their assignment defensively. So they were locked in. Tom Thibodeau has them locked in defensively, man. Um, they were very active with their hands. Even on uh, handoffs, they were getting steals, knocking the ball off of one of the Pistons players' uh, hip out of bounds. So they were just very, very active. Very, very active, very committed to the defensive end. If they play like that, they are a serious Eastern Conference uh, Finals contender. And they don't even have Mitchell Robinson back yet. They may not have him at all. But without their anchor, they are all committed defensively. I mean, Mikael Bridges, OG and Anobi, Josh Hart, all those guys are dogs, man. And they're very long and they're strong and they make it tough. They make it very, very tough on you. So that, that was tough, man. That was tough to watch. I think the Knicks are a matchup nightmare for our current team. Even for guys like Kate, who played well tonight. You know, those guys are long, man. They're very, very long. K was, you know, K was going to a move. He would go to a counter. He'd go to another counter. They'd still be there, you know, so like, so they made it tough on them. They're very, very tough on the perimeter. And... I gotta say this too, man. Jalen Brunson, top 10 player. Jalen Brunson is tough, man. I mean, we've seen him before, but it looks like every season he can just gets a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. And tonight he was just getting whatever he wanted, man. I mean, he's a three level scorer already, right? He can get it however he wanted. Um, and he made it tough. He made it very, very tough. We really couldn't stop him tonight. And additionally, Carl Anthony Towns, man, he is a matchup nightmare for our bigs right now because he's a little bit too quick for JD and he's a little bit bigger than Isaiah Stewart right so that makes it hard he's kind of a tweener already as we know he's not really a center is he really a center is he a power forward he's kind of a tweener right and obviously he's too big for Tobias Harris so he he made it very tough on our bigs tonight I noticed this too about the Knicks they play chess very well offensively especially individually you could see those guys just setting up whoever was defending them play by play you see Cat put the ball on the floor drive past Jalen Duran because he's quicker afoot and get an easy layup. And on the ensuing play, and he just pulls up for three, right? Because Jalen Duran is giving him space because of the last play when he drove on him. So he didn't want to give up the drive. So you could just see Cap was playing chess. And with Jalen Brunson, it was the opposite. On one play, he came down the court and just rose for a three. And on the very next play, you know, I think it was Jaden Ivey on the play. He overcommitted and then Jalen Brunson cut back door, right? So you, you could just see both of these guys just playing chess, setting up their defender for the very next play. So yeah, they're, they're really tough tonight, man. Both of those guys are very, very tough. But overall, the Pistons, 
like I mentioned, they they pretty much hung with the Knicks for the rest of the game. Other than that first quarter, the game was pretty much even. I mean, the second quarter, they actually won 33 to 30. The third quarter, they lost 35 28. In the fourth quarter, it was even 24 24. So that first quarter really did them in 39 to 13. So the Pistons, they got punched in the mouth, man. I've talked about it before. I'm going to say it again. The Pistons need to learn and focus on really just playing four quarters of basketball, right? We've seen before in previous games where they come out hot and they let teams back in the game in the fourth quarter, right? This game it was the opposite. They came out slow in the first quarter and then got into the game progressively in the second, third, and fourth quarter. So these quarters, these individual quarters and in games are causing the Pistons wins. I'm not saying they would have won tonight, but if they had came out in the first quarter with the same effort they had in the second, third, and fourth quarter, it would have been a ball game. So that's really what it comes down to. The Knicks are a very good basketball team, don't get me wrong, but the Pistons are not 30 points worse than this basketball team. They're not. And so I think that's the only thing you can take away from this game. It's not anything new. They just need to learn how to put four quarters together. And they have to be locked in from the very beginning of the game. Otherwise, they're going to get blown off the floor. I did notice a battle between Cat and Isaiah Stewart tonight. They were barking at each other. They were going back and forth at each other. Tough cover for Isaiah Stewart, man. I mean, it's tough cover for anybody, right? But Stu was giving it all he had, man. But he was still making an impact on the defensive end, right? I mean, Cat was Cat was giving him buckets at times. But at other times, Stu was battling and blocking the shot, right? And barking at him. So he battled. There was one particular play where they were fighting in the paint. I think Cat got the offensive rebound, he got the bucket, and he let out a screen. And he turned around and Isaiah Stewart kind of followed him down the court and said, hey bro, don't be disrespectful. <laughs> and it looked like Cat was like, nah bro, it ain't even about that, I'm just hype. That's kind of the vibe I got from that. I, w I reminded it a few times and just kind of watched it. And it looked like Stu just didn't want to be disrespected on his home court. And I think Cat kind of obliged and they just kept playing, right? But once again, man, Stu was just gonna set that tone, right? Whether we're getting blown out by 30, whether we up 30. He just wants to make sure that this team is respected. I think that's what it comes down to. He's trying to set a tone, and he wants everybody who comes in here to have a certain level of respect for the Pistons, but the Pistons got to go out and earn it, right? He's trying to set the tone, but you can't get blown out by 30 and, and expect to be respected. You got to put wins together. That's really the only way to earn that respect with a tough play and by getting dubs. So I like that Stu did that. It didn't really impact the outcome of the game, but once again, he's just setting the tone. We got 12 points from Fontecchio, 12 points, four rebounds. Five for seven from the field, you know, so he was solid. But other than that, we didn't get too much, guys. I mean, that first quarter really just did us in. It really just did us in. Kate was our leading scorer tonight. He had 22 points, six rebounds, six assists. But he didn't get much help otherwise. I mean, Tobias Harris had 13. Jaden only had 10. Jaden was in foul trouble early. He got two quick fouls in the first quarter. And I think that really took him out of his rhythm. Um, but he tried to do what he could. He had 10 points, you know, five rebounds, two assists, four turnovers. So he didn't have a great game. Only played 19 minutes, couldn't catch a rhythm. Um, Tim Hardaway Jr. didn't give us too much. Eight points, three for nine from the field, two for seven from three. Jalen Darren is still struggling, man. He had five points, seven rebounds, two assists, one block, three turnovers, 18 minutes. And it seems like Jalen Darren is just not really comfortable right now. He seems completely out of rhythm. Even when he's just doing something as simple as setting screens, it looks like he's afraid to set screens. It doesn't look like he's figured it out yet, it looks like he's just more so afraid of setting a screen. So all the screens are coming off really soft and it's not giving our guards that much room. Because last game we noticed that he kept getting hit with offensive fouls because he wasn't setting up in time. And that could have been because of Cade moving a little bit too quickly or JD setting up too late. But one of the two was causing him to be out of position and getting offensive fouls. So tonight it looked like he was, a, it didn't look like he figured it out. It looked like he was still just afraid to, to set a screen because he thought he was going to get caught for offensive foul. And you look at a guy like Isaiah Stewart, look at how many screens he set and look how many times he was called for offensive fouls. He sets a hard screen every time and he is rarely called for offensive fouls because he has that timing down with the guards, it appears. And JD is struggling to find that. So that's something he's going to have to keep working on. It's going to take time. Offensively, that has to be the focus for him because he's not going to be able to get much offense outside of that. The pick and roll wasn't working because he wasn't setting the screen properly, right? So he's not able to roll and then create from there. So yeah, it was a tough night for JD, man. I'm not jumping off the boat when it comes to him. I'm not saying trade him or anything like that yet. It's way too early, but he needs to improve. Uh, he definitely needs to improve. He, this is kind of been a few games here where he's really struggled. So I'm looking to see some improvement, hopefully from Jalen Duran soon. That's pretty much it, man. I mean, I don't really have too much more for you guys. This was, this was a very tough game to watch. The Pistons just have to bring their A game from start, man. They have to bring their A game from jump. 
the Pistons have to be the initiator, especially at home. You want to get up early on teams at home. You want to set the tone early at home. You want to get your crowd into it at home, right? You got to feed off that energy at home. So the Pistons hopefully learned a valuable lesson tonight. Um, we have a young team. You know, these are lessons that young teams have to learn. But this is part of the growing pains. We know the Pistons have the ability to be a good team. Just look at the rest of the game. But they weren't ready to start the game. They didn't come ready. And that's what happens when you play a good team. So the Pistons have a chance to redeem themselves this Sunday against the New Jersey Nets. Um, I think that'll be a game they'll win. Um, they're a better team than the Nets. And after getting blown off your home court by 30, I think you will be upset. Or I will hope you will be upset. And take some of that anger out on a team that you're better than. But what did you see that I missed? There was a lot that we could talk about, right? So let me know what you guys thought about this game in the comments down below. And let's talk about it. Appreciate you hanging with your boy. And as always, Detroit versus everybody. Peace. Breaking records, set by Michael J. Bringing glory days back to the future, Michael J. He's way ahead of his time, he's got a plan, yeah. Fed off by none other than his brother Cannon. If this is more than a game, it's a passion. Why they sleep, we working, cause I'm a action. Jay, then I'll be on the way and get that put a ride. Electrifying through the air, a Detroit shot. And it doesn't really matter if you love him, like him, hate him. That boy is born.